Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. It's time to join the conversation. Welcome. This is Chet Sears. I got Matt Amos and Troy Trussell with me here today here. on the Hard Headed Podcast. Right here. Matt is crinkling his paper to let just, everyone know he is prepared. Just so you know, Matt brought a piece of paper. That's all it is, is a piece of paper. <laughs> With our schedule He's on He's creating it. the illusion it. of preparedness. Well, that was me. Today, we have what's on Troy's mind for our first segment. Hey segment number two, the top three. Top three names for boats. Your, what are you going to name your yacht? What are you going to name your cruiser? Whatever that is. And then a good word from, from Matt. Troy, what's on your mind? So, recently... Um, there's been some news going on in the housing industry and it has to do with old, our buddy, pal, president Biden. So he, uh, the funny thing is this, uh, law or whatever that he's trying to get passed was supposed to go into, supposed to already pass and go into effect on May 1st, which was, it's a rule. Uh, he's he's changing, rule, yeah. He's changing the rule to um, the the government funded mortgages. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, right? Yeah. So as we're recording this, I can't find anywhere to, that says that states that it did go into effect. Okay. But maybe it did. Maybe you could uh, have better luck. Um. But yeah, I ran across a a reel the other day that was. Uh, talking about people were up in arms because it's basic, basically subsidizing uh, for people that shouldn't really have be able to get a loan to get a home. The government is subsidi- giving them subsidized funds so that they can get into a home. It's kind of what the rule Subsidized is. by what? Um, our tax dollars. Um, so what they're claiming is like that people should, every, everybody should live the American dream and everybody should be able to, to get in a home. Right. And they've done the same thing with healthcare. Um, and then the more I dug into this, the more that I've seen, like he's been trying to pass all kinds of rules in the, in the housing market. Like back in March, there was, uh, the down payment toward equity act that gave, First time home buyers a grant of up to twenty five thousand dollars cash for a d- either down payment, part of down payment, closing costs on a mortgage, interest rate reductions, via discount points, and other her- home purchase expense. And uh, as of May third, you know you had to be a, a first time home buyer to get that. So, and the reel that I watched was claiming like this is just another another stab at socialism to make everybody equal. So everybody can own a house uh, and just taking money from the wealthy people with higher credit scores. Well, that doesn't mean you're wealthy. That well, just means that's you don't, true. That means you, you don't have your, a lot of debt and you manage your finances. Well, as well. You could have a lot of debt. You just pay it back. Like right. you, you're not uh you're not delinquent. Yeah. Cause what is a person's credit score? It's, it's one of the most important indicators of credit worthiness in America for for lenders. Yeah. Helping to determine if a prospective borrower is going to qualify for a loan and what interest rate they'll be able able to get because of their uh, credit score. Yeah. Like, so when I went and we, we bought seven houses in the past 11 years and the first house that we went to buy, or actually the second one that we went to buy, my credit score wasn't that great. So I had to pay down some stuff, pay down some stuff, get that credit score up before we could even get the the mortgage uh, lender to pre-approve us. Yeah. So, so yeah, the Biden administration wants to hike payments for good credit home buyers to subsidize high risk mortgages. So they're lowering. They're raising, basically, they're penalizing you for having a good credit score. Right. And they're removing penalties for low credit scores. So they pay less 
And in their paying less, they're making it where the good credit score people have to pay more to make up the difference. Correct. As far as I understand it, that is. That is sharing the load, Matt. So first and foremost. Socialism. I am a big fan of people owning homes. I think that's a huge, and if you want to look at, uh, you know, and this is why property values are so, uh, so important is the, one of the only opportunities that a majority of the people in this, uh, in this country have to pass wealth along is through property, right? So buying a house and having that, um, paying it off over, you know, let's say you get into a house and you live in it 30 years, you get that thing paid off. You go, and if you didn't save another cent, you st- there's still a value to pass on for your family. And, you know, whether or not your kids yeah. move into it and they have a safe place to live, having a safe place to live is a huge thing. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan of doing what we can to support people um, to get into a home. I'm not a fan of penalizing people that have done things well to give it other people a chance. Yeah. Uh, involuntarily. Hey, put a checkbox. Hey, if you want to pay more to help somebody go, here's a checkbox. I mean, they do that when you're checking out at the grocery store or whatever. Yeah, hey, give, hey, give them an opportunity. hey, you want yeah. to round up your, your payment this month to yeah. help this person out? Heck no. Well, okay. yeah, depending on your situation, somebody could say yes, but they make could. it voluntary. Don't make it involuntary, right? right. Don't, don't take and, and yeah. give it to somebody else. Redistribution of wealth. What are your thoughts on this, Matt? Tired of it. <laughs> it, it, it. It's government as a whole. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and that, that's what they've been pushing. They're they're uh, hey, it's okay to be uh, um, below average. Yeah, be you're, we're, but we're going to punish you if you're good at anything. I mean, it's 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 completely reversed. I mean, the Bible says it's going to happen anyway, but I mean, it's still a hard pill to swallow. Because I think it's only going to get worse. Well, and it's bad timing as well because you've got interest rates are what six? Yeah, six percent. You, uh, the housing market has one hundred percent cooled down. There's hardly any volume out there, and you're making it easier for people that are more likely to default on a mortgage to get into homes. You're making it harder for people that are less likely to default on a mortgage to get into homes. This is not their. This is not. This sounds I, I, familiar. No, I don't. I don't think that they're they're making it harder for people with more money. This is more expensive. More expensive is harder. But I don't. But I, I still don't think it's that much harder. It, to me, it's it's lowering. It, it's it's the overall lowering of the standard. That and and. You're st- you're still penalizing them, but I, I don't think that those people with those credit scores. It's not like they're going to not go buy a house, right? Well, to, it may. But to me, if I was that person, I would say, you know what? No, I am not. I'm just going to stay in my house. I'm going to stay in my house. Yeah, I'm going to be happy with what I have and screw the government and the uh, the commercialism as a whole. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to keep my truck for more than two years. Which guess what? The truck I have now. I've had for more than two years. That's the first truck I've ever done. <laughs> for more than two years? Yeah. You're kidding me. No. How many so, vehicles have you owned in your life? Lot. Like 50? A lot. And uh, so uh, basically the standard was anytime it started to creep towards 100,000 miles, gone. Well, vehicles are made differently today than they were when you got that mentality. Yeah. Be- better or worse? They're cheaper today. Yeah. But huh? they're made more cheaply today with plastic parts that fall apart, whereas... How many miles you got on your truck? On my truck, 116,000. You, you get 116,000 on a truck that was built in 1987? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. No. You sure can if you know how to mechanic. That's what I'm saying. You have to work on it. These are basically maintenance-free going 100, 200,000 miles today. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know. Now, my, I will say this. My wife's van has uh, – every time I get in there, I'm just shocked at the number – that's on the odometer. Is it as mi- a million miles like Troy's car no, was? No, it's not. No, it's One not three million, million miles. Yeah, dude, it killed it. <laughs> it's not like whatever that car was that he obviously has no idea that the numbers. The you Delta, know, yeah, yeah. This actually has uh, six numbers with the uh, little dash for yeah. the, you know. Yeah. And 
last I got in there, it was 235,000 miles Get on that some. van. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, we've had that nice. thing since it was brand new in 2012, and she just keeps driving it and keeps driving it. And good, so. good for her. I mean, it annoys me because I'm like, I can hear this rattle in this door back here. I can hear this. I can hear the road noise more in this than I can in my truck, you know, and I'm like that. Well, one of the reasons is because in your truck, you're so far away from the road. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cars. I mean, anything that sits that close to the road is <laughs> yeah. kind of loud. True story. Now, when my tires wear down, it gets loud. <clears throat> but no, I I don't know. But I think that's one way because, I mean, that's that's what um, society is basically and, and, and companies have pushed everybody for is, hey, you need to here's the latest and greatest. You need to get it. You need to get it. You need to buy this. If we just stop. I think everything comes back down to uh, reason being priced within reason. If we just yeah, keep you, things for very, a little bit longer than uh, than we want to. People can't just stop. You're very hopeful. Yeah. I know they can't just stop, but I'm just saying that's that's a way. You mean, you mean tell you another problem I recently found out about this? This keep it longer? I have a vehicle that I've had over 10 years. You, uh, your truck? Yeah. Yep. The, the, the 2013 Ford, Ford F-150. I uh, noticed the other day looking the license plate on that thing worn out. Like you can't see it. The reflective stuff is gone. The numbers have faded. Perfect. And uh, <laughs> so I was like, Hey DMV, what do I got to do to get a uh, reprint of this license plate that I purchased through you? We don't do that, sir. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, we, we don't, we don't do that. You can't, you got to just re-register your vehicle. Oh, well then I mean, I wouldn't do anything. Yeah, I'm not. I'm like, that's the dumbest thing in the world. I already registered this. I shouldn't have to pay for it again. You gave me a a state issued license plate. And if it goes bad, the state should give me a new license plate. Yeah. Uh, No, I don't have to go, but they want me to go in there. See, they didn't expect and get a you new to, light, re-register, get a new license plate. They didn't expect a, they somebody didn't to think, own a, a no, car for ten years. They didn't years. think you were going to own it that long. Yeah. See, I mean, we just we <laughs> state of Kansas. You better fix it. You fix it. I'm, fix tell, it. I'm telling you, we <laughs> start keeping. What do they do now? now? Fix it. Keep keep them longer, and we bring this whole system down. And license, fix it. License plates, homes, trucks. Hey, whatever. hey, they're doing just. And the economy at all good, going to. <laughs> good enough without us trying to take it down. They're going to bring it down themselves. So I fix it. That's what I'm saying. I shouldn't have to pay for a license plate again. Yeah. Because of that poor quality. Yeah. So an example of the housing deal, someone with a below average credit score of 640 who's seeking a $350,000 mortgage with 20% down payment paid uh, ten thousand five hundred dollars in fees before the new regulations, they will now only have to pay seven thousand eight hundred. So you're getting a three thousand dollar cut, thirty percent cut, and er- people with a better credit score are having to pay more now to cover that that yeah that cut. Yep. It, when when has the government ever solved anything? Like this is not gonna all of a sudden. Yeah. Hey, everybody gets to go buy a house now. No. Did you know 65% of Americans own a home already? No. It's a statistic I heard today. I don't know about that. I don't know. I'll, I'll double check and look it up again. Yeah, I'm not. I'm I don't not believe too sure you. about that. Yeah. So anyway, that's been what's on my mind. Just more stupid stuff from Washington. Look, hey, everybody gets a trophy. All right, that's the society we live in. That's what, that's who's running our government. I mean, everybody gets a trophy. All right. Yeah, hey, Troy's not not too far off here. What's it say? Um, let's see. Since 1960, home ownership rate in the U.S. has remained relatively stable. It's decreased one percent since 1960 when it was 65%. So it's less than 65% now. 64%, Troy. Oh, 2% off. Thanks for trusting in my knowledge. This guy. Men. I believe you. (laughs) 
Well, that's 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 decent numbers, but I, that's not in the city. That's the that's the thing. Is there's yeah. a well, and I wonder. I don't know because that what does that do for people that own multiple homes, like all these people that own these VRBO properties and all that now? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's cool. We're gonna come back after commercial break with our top three. <laughs> We're going to talk about making it harder for people to buy houses, and now we're going to name our boats. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't own. Hey, it doesn't say anything about credit on boats, all right? Yeah. Um, yeah there's Biden. What's Biden? You help me out there, Biden? Uh, he doesn't want you to have a boat. All right. We're going to a break. Are you driving traffic to your website? Do you have an engaging homepage? Better yet, does your homepage have a video? We recently created a video for a client about his business and the services they provide. Since he placed the video on the homepage of their website, he has had a number of clients specifically say they decided to use his services because of that video. At Trussell Media, we help businesses create engaging videos to host on their websites, email to clients, and use in their social media marketing. Contact us if you're interested in creating a video for your homepage today, trusselmedia.com. Fill out the form at trusselmedia.com slash contact. Let us help you tell your story through video. And we're back. Top three names for boats, boats for names. Matt, why don't you fire away? Number three, the sea leg. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be two sea legs? I mean, it, either way, I got to go. Uh, it, it's a boat, so it was still, I would say that it has to be singular, sea leg. I got to go pick up my sea leg. Nice. We'll now, go. is it spelled C S E A? Yeah. Okay. Not like sea leg, like the uh, prosthetic. There's leg. a prosthetic C, the letter C leg. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Although, you know what? Let's change it. Sea leg. Let's just go with that because yeah. it's out there. Sea leg, and then they see the guy walking around on the. On the boat in the uh, prosthesis, you know. Yeah, uh, you Makes sell sense. that for a sponsorship. Is that, is uh, that listen up, Otto Bach. I need a boat. I'm going to call it the Sea Leg. You need me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but before you do that, you might want to go ahead and make that knee uh, completely waterproof. Yes. Sea Leg's not. Uh, number two. Unsinkable. Oh. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see what nice. you did there. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, Titanic. Yeah. Yep, they said it was the unsinkable ship, but they haven't built another one. Oh, I went a different route. It's like a floater that won't go down. See, there's so many ways. Unsinkable can... number two. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking. I Titanic. was thinking of large ships. Not no, uh, no, no. Not that, that, boy, that boy's gassy. Yeah, yeah. It's you a, have a little a uh, flusher. Put a, put a little poop emoji right next to it on the back of your boat. Yep. <laughs> unsinkable two. Oh, uh, unsinkable number two. Number two. Yeah. And then uh, number one, uh, if there's any uh, parents with kids, uh, cover their ears just in case. Uh, the wet dream. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll go next. Next. Chat, what you got? <laughs> uh, num number three. A shout out to our podcast and one of our uh, future t-shirt ideas. Don't sauce my meat. Man. That'd be my boat name. Love that. Man, that you know. shirt is ready to go. I, I did get see, that uploaded. You know what? Matter of fact, I saw some uh, somebody the other day, one of the barbecue uh, little groups on Facebook or something like that posted, do you, uh, should people sauce, uh, do you like your meat sauced or no? No. Yeah. Don't. And there was there's a lot of people in there that were in favor of saucing meat. I mean, those people are lazy. But if you're going to if it's going to be sauced, they need to be the one that sauces it. Well, Don't I, serve sauce meat. Absolutely. That's and what I'm saying. Th that's yeah. the that's They're the lazy. caveat. That's the caveat. Yeah. That's the caveat. I, I want to be able to sauce my own meat. Yeah. There's some really good barbecue sauces out there. But I don't want it on you my meat. You don't put it on my meat. and I, I put it on. I yeah. decide to dip it if I'm going to do it. Exactly. And this That's boat, of, this boat of mine that I named that would, would let all the seven seas know, don't sauce it. Just let it be sauceless. Number two, this is a little on the fishing side. This would be a fishing boat. The Sunrise Service. A little throwback to the church. Remember the Sunrise oh, Service yeah. at oh, church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be out there at Sunrise fishing. 
Mm. So the sunrise service. And number one, shout out to my favorite TV show, The Sweet Fancy Moses. Remember that Seinfeld episode? Jerry's like, Sweet Fancy Moses. <laughs> yeah. And that's what this name of this my boat would be. The Sweet Fancy Moses. Nice. I like it. So there you go. I have an honorable mention too that none of you guys are going to have, but I'll still wait. There's no way you're going to have it. Oh, I'm sure not. Absolutely not. Good. Guaranteed, Matt. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. All right, my uh, number number three is the Falcon. Oh, Star Wars. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Millennium would just be too long, so just the Falcon. That'd be nice. Uh, number two would be Black Betty. Oh, Black Betty. Bam a lamb. There you would go. You, would that be yeah. the name of the dinghy uh, for your boat? Bam a lamb. lamb. Get the bam a lamb. <laughs> Take us to shore. Yes, that's awesome. I like that. Uh, that's a good one. That's 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 a good one. Black Betty. That's what the kids call my car, Black Betty. And I've played that song for her. Big Al them. calls his motorcycle. Have Black, you seen that Black video? Betty. Have you seen yeah. that music video? Uh, I don't think so. I just know the song. Dude. Have you seen it? I've seen it, but I'm. It's like a, just a bunch of old hippie dudes, and the guy's like, it's, it's hilarious. Hour. We'll show it to you. All right, it's we'll, good. We'll watch it later. We're not watching anything on the podcast anymore. Too much dead air. It was terrible. It's not. Last, it's fine. Last week, it was horrible. People, they tune in more. They listen harder. Like, what, am I, what are they about to do? <laughs> what are they about to say? Yeah. <gasps> and it's nothing. <laughs> number one. Uh, number one would be the Trussell Tribe. It's our family name. The TT? TTT. That goes along with your number two. The Trussell Tribe. Oh, oh you're including the, the T. T cubed. Triple T. <laughs> yep, that's our little family name. And uh, if I have a boat right now, it's going to have five kids on it. All the time. All the time. So I'm not getting a boat. But Honestly, if you had a boat right now, you'd probably have it at one mean, time. And then it'd be in your garage broken down. I've owned a yeah. boat. I know what happens. Yeah. Break out another thousand. I wish I had, if I had like B -O -A -T. $30,000 to throw away, I'd get one of those new Sea-Doo pontoon. Why? Why would you oh, take $30,000 and put it into a boat? No, I'm no, just no, saying, no, like, if that. I had 30 grand to throw away, like, no, no, if no, I no, made no. Why 30 would you not million, get like a you can get a good pontoon boat for uh, five grand. Oh, I know, but bucks. I'm yeah, saying, yeah. you're not listening to me. If I was like a, if I had like 30 million, yeah. 30,000 would be nothing, then it's, I would probably buy one. Not a Sea-Doo. I think they're like, pretty cool. Looking. No, no, no. Get you, a tri-tune with like a big 150 four-stroke on the back no, of it. No, no. Okay. Absolutely sure. not. Yes, no. yes. When I was in the hospital, <laughs> I, I at one point wanted a pontoon boat. Yeah. And so my, my uncle had just bought one. And he came out to San Diego and visited me and brought me a bunch of brochures for pontoon boats. Right. I went to the website. And I, Bennington. And I built this pontoon boat. It was a Bentley. Bentley? And... By the time I was done, do you know what that pontoon boat cost me? Hundred and seven thousand dollars. Hundred and fifteen thousand. Pretty close. <laughs> but wow. I mean, shower, bathroom. Oh god! Lights you don't that need go into that. the lights that go into the water that yeah, light yeah. it up around the boat. Uh, barbecue grill, just su yeah. super nice. Bad, you know, bad stereo system, and I mean, it was legit. But I, I looked at that and I was like, well, now I got to have a truck to pull that thing. So then that's when I was like, it's another hundred thousand dollars. Now, you know, yeah. uh, I was like, I'm being this thing for 250000 I think well, there's a lot more that I could do with 250000 Yeah, especially $250,000 rolling down the highway. Yeah. That's a lot different than $250,000 on a foundation somewhere. Yep. Yep. But I'm not, I haven't had a Build good luck with pontoon boats. Build your foundation on stone. I got a, <laughs> I was fishing at Lake Fork with my buddy Griff. His boat caught on fire while I was driving it. And I remember, yeah, I remember you telling me that, yeah. And then this last trip I was down there, he has a new pontoon boat because the other one caught on fire. And uh, he blames me for that, by the way. And then we're back down there. It's definitely this, your this fault. One is the one we're in. It didn't catch on fire, but it broke down. And I'm like, dude. Man. Yeah. It was speaking of, so he had a bass boat that was made by Pro Gator. And it had like a big Pro Gator sticker on the side of it, both sides of it. He had some hole work done because he got damaged at some point. So they... To, you know, took all the decals off and they were about to put decals, decals back on. And he's like, Hey, can you, can you print me a new one? 
instead of progator, I wanted to say instigator. And they did. It. <laughs> nice. and they did it in the company font and all that kind of stuff, which was pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. That was a good that was a good boat name. So my honorable mention is the uh man, I, I'll give you guys like fifty dollars right now if you could tell me uh what Sonny Crockett's boat name was. Who's Sonny Crockett? You know Sonny Sonny Crockett? No. No? I've heard the name. I don't. I don't oh know. gosh, Davy's brother. That's a uh, no. <laughs> that was That's a uh, that from Miami Jones. Vice. So oh, the dude, yeah. he, uh, he lived. I've never watched Miami. He lived Vice. on. I've, it's I've a seen. Really good show. I've seen two episodes. He uh, the old one or the new one? The old one. Yeah. Is there a new TV show? Yeah, it's terrible. There is. No. Tweeter is on it. Yeah. It's like the new uh, Red Dawn. It's dead to me. <laughs> um. <laughs> But he so he lived on a on a sailboat at a, at a marina, and then he had a big cigarette boat that he cruised around with and fight crime. But uh, the sailboat he lived on was called the uh, Saint Vitus Dance, and it goes back. Saint Vitus is a martyr. He was a, a son of an emperor who converted to uh, Christianity, and his, his his dad had him killed, and and. But then they also, so St. Vetus is actually somebody that the certain illness people would pray for. And before Parkinson's uh, was really identified and diagnosed and all that kind of stuff, they referred to the shaking as St. Vetus dance. It's pretty interesting. So there you know, there, there you go. A little, little bit of So is that Don, history. Don Johnson's character or the other guy? Yeah, no, Don Johnson. Tubbs oh. is the other guy. Tubbs. Ricardo Tubbs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, we're going to find it. Dude, it's a great TV show. It's I mean, really I remember good. remember it being on, wasn't it? Dun, 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 dun. Is that it? No, or that was Night Rider. Yes, uh, it's uh, a little yes. too. I mean, it's it's. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> sounds just like it. <laughs> yeah. It's so eighties that it's oh, ridiculous. Yeah. It's a great TV show. All right, all right. Well, let's top three. I can't, the, I can't the gunfire. I just can't. <laughs> 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 It was a ten, he, was shooting, he was shooting a 10 millimeter. Good for him. It yeah. doesn't sound like that in real life. It was life. a bear gun. He's out there. <laughs> he wasn't shooting nothing. The video editors at that back then, they didn't know how to make, uh, make gun sounds. really good gun sounds. So. They still don't. You know, we'll save it for another podcast. <laughs> All right. Okay, Matt. Good word, buddy. Denial. It ain't just a river in it Egypt. It ain't just a river in Egypt. <laughs> Today's good word comes out of 2 Peter 2, 1. 2, 1. And it says, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Now, I've... But, uh, you know, I had a little bit of time because, I, you know, last week and, and uh, um, traveling and being in the airport and having a whole lot of time, I spent a little bit more time scrolling through the uh, the Facebooks <laughs> and uh, than, than I would have liked and um, came across, uh, you know, and I've got some I've got a lot of friends, uh, you know, on Facebook that I know and, and have met over the years and met through various activities. And and uh, it, it's just interesting to see um, how some of them who are. Um, atheists mm -hmm. can't i mean they they spend more time complaining about what what we do and how we worship and 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 who we worship when it, they've even got people in their own groups in their comments when they post something saying why why do you even care if they it doesn't exist that's not what this page is for this is not a religious page we're just a group of people who are atheists, we, we don't believe in anything. Just want to get together and get away from anybody who does believe anything, but you're bringing it more into this. And so it, it, it it's, it's just funny to me how hard they, they deny our, our, our creator when all the evidence is there. And, you know, and, and there's people that are really well-spoken um, atheists who, who don't believe that try to convince you that nothing exists and they want to change your belief and change your thoughts. And, and those I think are the people that we need to 
I mean, you got to look out for them because a lot of them do it in very subtle, sneaky ways. Um, you know, that, that they've got your kids watching, they've got, um, it, you know, they're, they've got an audience that's, that's easily succept, susceptible to, to those kind of, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, it not iterations, but yeah. I- ideals. So da- you're going to just going to throw a little doubt in there. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you know, and, and, and we as Christians, I mean, doubt, doubt is healthy. I mean, I've got questions about stuff all the time, but that doesn't mean that I don't believe. Yeah. You know, there, there's certain parts of the Bible that don't make sense that I don't think will be revealed to us until we're, we're with him, which I think is cool. You yeah. Know? And if your pursuit of, I want to help remove this doubt then is digging further into the and, word, then right. more power to you. I mean, go, because go, that's go where you're going to, right. That's where you're going to find it. You're not going to, but when you go and you start, you start searching that yeah. in other places to try to cor- 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 corroborate, corroborate 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 i don't even know how corroborate it. i know what it means i don't know how to say Car- it. carburetor but you know i mean uh when you go outside the word to try to, to try to get things to line up with that i mean you're not going to find it and that's where you're going to get into those dicey situations where you, you've got people telling you what the bible says instead of you deciphering what what the bible says and, and how god speaks to you through that i agree with you especially for the people that are looking for a quick answer but there are some specific cases very specific cases where um, people have intellectual honesty to go find, pr- disprove. Least trouble comes to mind. Case for Christ is the book that he wrote. He was just a investigative journalist, and he's like, "I'm going to go. I'm going to go prove that this Jesus guy didn't didn't really exist." Exit, right. And then he goes through. He naturally he touches the Bible some, but he's going through historical documents, records of the day, outside of the Bible. And he finds with their accounts outside the Bible that say there are witnesses that that saw Jesus after he was crucified. And then he goes into the crucifixion and realizes that the Romans don't make a mistake when they try to kill somebody. Like they they kill well, them. Well, I mean, but but, and, but at that point you're talking historical data. You're not talking. You, you know what I mean? But I mean, I'm saying he in his effort to prove that, that Jesus that, wasn't real, that led him there. He found it yeah. that it was real. A lot of people that are like, oh, I'm just, I don't believe Jesus is real. And they don't go try to, they're like, ah, oh, yeah, see this guy on the, on the internet. He said he wasn't real. So yeah, I don't have to dig any I'm further. I'm just going to line up with yeah. that because it's easy. Yeah. So anyway, the good word, I guess, if you want to call it that is denial. I've just seen a lot of people trying to uh, convince other people that uh, he doesn't exist, trying to change their faith. And I mean, you're not going to do it over social media. That's just the. I, right. You know, that's just word. It's yep. not going to happen that way. But anyway, can't, can't do a lot of things. With watch out for media. them. And, and uh, you know, I mean, really, uh, really watch what uh, what you're watching and what's being said, because there are subtleties in there that don't always line up with what you believe. 100 percent agree. Thank you, Matt, for that wonderful good word. Thank you, Troy, for bringing us up on some uh, mortgage rule changes. <coughs> Vote for your best boat name. Yeah, I think Black Betty's going to win it for me. In the comments, I don't know. I think my number one is <laughs> pretty good. No. And I, I, well, Unsinkable 2, if you think about it in my way, it was a very good name. And for the amputees out there, the sea leg. I mean. Yeah. Got to have something. Got We got we got a boat for everybody. Yeah. All right. At least a boat name for everybody. We don't actually have a boat. Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, share. Really appreciate you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.